Okay, so let's review your work. And remember, these are not criticisms of you as a person. This is just me giving constructive feedback to push your animations and help you be more successful in the job market and grow as an artist. That's the purpose of me as an instructor. So first off, let's take a look at what we've got going on here. I like the very subtle particles coming out of the word nor in the title. And this is an interesting fake camera movement you've got going on here. Now, these parts right here are not as successful. I know you want to create that rocky, choppy motion, but you know, your wood is still over here. And also when the crown comes down, it would be a nice touch if it had some follow through and overlapping motion. And I'll explain that in a second. So I'm gonna create a new composition because I don't have your files to go off of here. So I'm just going to create some new stuff and just show you here. Composition settings, let's make this black just so everything pops a little bit easier. Okay, now I'm going to do this quick and dirty just so I don't waste your time. And you get the idea. This is just to show you the techniques. That's what this is all about. Just helping you push your work. All right, I'm going to get rid of the stroke and make it a solid such. Okay, there's your crown. And remember, the anchor point goes with the motion because the anchor point will drive the animation and influence how it moves. I want this anchor point at the bottom middle. Okay, that is crucial because when it hits the head, there's going to be a little bit of a tilt of the crown and you want it to line up properly. So it's going to be two things, position and rotation. So I hold down, I hit P, I hold down shift and hit R. So I only have position and rotation up. All right, I'm going to deselect everything and make a quick head. So we've got an idea of what it's going to happen here. And I'm going to just make two colors randomly. Remember, these are simple shapes to show you the concepts without wasting your time watching me draw something pretty. Let's change the layer order. Okay, good. So that's the crown. Okay, good. All right, there's the head, there's the crown. Pretty self-explanatory. Going to move that off the screen. And remember, you can zoom out with your mouse wheel and you wanna make sure it's definitely off your screen. Fine with me, when hit position and watch how slow it falls, okay? Because you don't want it to be too slow. I mean, nothing falls that slow. So remember, things fall like pretty fast. Okay, that might be, let me drop down my resolution so I can preview faster. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay, that's a little bit better. Now, there's your impact. Click rotation. And you can have it jostle a little bit. And let's preview that real fast. Obviously, I'm going to right click and ease those keyframes. You can zoom in here and finesse them. Let's find out. Let's move that rotate a little bit. See now you've got some impact. I might even move it a little bit more earlier. See like that? It's not just plunking straight down. It's got some weight. Okay. And also if you look in here, there's no shadow where it's meeting the subject. Shadow will really help it rest on the scene. Right? And let's experiment with something here. So here we are in our composition. And I'm gonna bring the screenshot of your character, okay? Let me hide the layers below it. All right, there she is sitting right there. All right, fine. Let me increase the resolution. And I'm gonna get my... I'm gonna duplicate it. And with the duplicate, I'm going to just mask some of the hair. I'm just trying something out here. This is experimental. Like I said, motion design is all about having an idea and running with it. Okay, so there's the hair isolated. All right, so I'm going to offset from the right-hand side. Let's do subtle. Clicking here next to the title safe will show or hide your masks. And also I'm gonna hit F for feather. I'm gonna feather this a little bit. 
not too much, not too much. I do not want a crisp, sharp edge. I do not want a feathery, smoky mess. All right, now let's play around with our evolution. Let's move down here. Go to the end of there, sure, why not? Uh, no, let's just do 10 seconds, just for the fun of it. All right, so we'll go here, and we'll do two full evolutions. This might help. Vertical displacement only. Let's try horizontal. There we go. All right. Now, let's lower our amount. Lower the size. Take a look at it. Too subtle. bit better uh, okay so let's move this to the top of the head top center of the head let's see what no pin does nope pin top just the top mm, do high so pin vertical A little bit better. But we don't want to pin vertical. Let's pin horizontal. Let's see what that does. It's actually interesting. None. No pinning. Okay. So watch what happens if I put the person below again. Now you've got a little bit of hair motion. Okay. Soft. Subtle, but we're adding some life and I did that with the still image and what makes this cell is that soft soft feather I put on it so that it doesn't clash with the still hair all right that is key let's go back to the crown Put that above scale it down pull up our keyframes and where's it end that. Remember, with both your keyframes selected, I can adjust the axes much more easily. Just like that. And you got the little boom going on and the hair flopping around. Not too much, but something subtle, okay? That's working on your main character. So we fixed the hair, okay? That's one thing. Let me purge my memory. Get back some space. All right, now, this fake camera movement works all right for that first part, but that would not happen. The mountain sliding in, and they wouldn't be rocking back and forth like that if it were an ocean view. And that happening. Now, what might help with that is open up a new comp. So that's just your person. I just faked that. I'm just dragging this artwork in. All right, so person's the topmost layer. Now, parallax might be your solution here. So. These are my switches. Remember, toggle switches and modes. There's my modes. I want to be in my switches. I'm going to 3D enable each layer to get this parallax to work, right? Here's a person. I'm going to select them all. Hit P. And remember, parallax works best when there's a big Z space difference between your layers. You can hover over your gizmo right there. Y. That's going to move them straight down. I'm using my center scroll wheel to move around. All right, I'm happy with that position. Now, here's the first range. Let me hide the other layers so I can focus. 
Alright. That's a pretty decent amount of Z space. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit S to scale it. I'm going to scale it up a little bit to fill up the screen. Alright. Not bad. I'll scale up a little bit more. Give myself some wiggle room here. And I can even bring that up on the Y a little bit. So it's going past the edges of the screen. That's important for when we do our fake camera movement. Well, actually, it is going to be real camera movement, but you know. I'm going to... Next. This mountain right here. So these are a thousand apart, and that's at zero. So if I go further back, let's try 2,000. Like that. And I'm going to hit S to scale it up. And I'm going to move it down on the Y. Like such. Happy with that. Now let's look at our clouds. Turn those on. These can be mid-ground. So if our character's Y and the first thing is 1,000, I'm going to make them 500. So they're halfway between them. And unfortunately for us, the clouds are blending in. So I'm going to let's throw a tint on this just so we can see what's happening here. Let's change white to green. There we go. Now this is just a quick rough. No, let's try brown just for the fun of it. So you can see your clouds. There we go. Tint keeps the grayscale values. Now, I mean, you're going to use whatever artwork you want, but now you can see where these clouds are going to be moving to and from. Alright, so, watch this. We've spread them out on Z after we 3D enabled them, alright? And I'm going to go Layer, New, Camera, alright? There's our camera. Watch what happens when I... Oh, and you know what? If we had some something in the background, that would look even better. Uh, I'm going to throw in a quick uh, sky. And I'm going to 3D enable that layer. And this one's going to go very far back. I know the mountains were 2,000, so let's try 3,000. Move it up. Then sky. Scale it up. So, in addition to setting up Z space, you can also do depth of field. Like, this is in focus. This is a little bit softer. That's pretty soft. I can then throw a blur on the clouds, I mean, the sky in the background. Uh, let's do Gaussian blur. That's pretty fast. There we go. And I'll make this a little bit, not too much. That'll help add some depth because we've got all that going on. All right, so here's our camera. Watch what happens if you use your camera tool here. This is the orbit camera. Look at that. You've got depth and the scene is moving organically. Remember, this is your orbit camera. Well, this is your universal movement, like if it were on your shoulder, okay? If you hit C again, this will orbit on an axis, side to side, all right? So that might give you some nice motion, like a little bit of a tilt there. Hit C again, this will zoom. Oh no, this is for, let me undo. If you hold down shift, you can go up or down. That's a tilt camera movement. You hold down shift and go side to side. That's a pan motion, all right? You see how everything's moving universally? And the further things are, the more parallax you're gonna get. Hit C again. This is your zoom in. Zoom out. Look at that. See? Now you're flying into the space. I think parallax will be a better solution than what you've come up with here. Um, and like I said, animating the hair is just small things like that really help push and add some life. Like that. That little bit of subtleness in a deeper scene with working parallax will really help get your foot in the door in the job market because it's very competitive out there and you want to put your best foot forward and you could even have things move if you wanted to like if you went p for position 
move forward. And I'm just going to have that drift across here, sure, like that. So you can see the clouds moving, and you could animate your camera however you want. And if you're unsure of what you want to do, you could click all of your keyframes, like that, plus zoom, like that. So let's go back a bit, and let's start like this. So it'll be a zoom out and your cloud's still moving, okay? And if you didn't know what you want to do next, let's say we went over here and we grabbed our orbit camera and we did a tilt over this way because we've got a little bit more footage like that. So there you go, coming into the scene, adding some life. And last but not least, uh, let's do your text. I like the particles you got going on. And also don't forget, if you 3D enable your type, it's going to move with your camera and sit in the scene perfectly. All right? Like such. Things that might help with your title, aside from those particles, which I love. Light sweep. And I'll show you what that is. I'll throw that on there. And let's put that here. You can see it. Start going on the lettering. So I'm going to put it right here. Here's where it's going to start. And I'm going to animate the center. Let's go forward a few seconds. Now I drag my center. And you'll see that little light gleam move across the type. See right there starting off. Let me just scrub with the playhead. Save it some time. See right there? Like that, you get some nice depth added in on top of that with that bevel look. You can change the angle of your light sweep to better suit the lighting of your scene if you want, or change the color of it, the blend mode, all up to you. These are just some helpful suggestions on pushing your animation a little further and helping it be a little bit more uh, unified and giving you some ideas that'll really help stand out when other people review your reel. Like even just duplicating the hair and masking it and then putting that turbulent displace on there. That's what I did and I keyframed the evolution from zero like that, at least like two full circles, you know, just something subtle. Give it some life. Watch that crown, how it comes down. Because, uh, you know, you want to have that little bit of after motion. Things like that will really help make this sing. But uh, pretty nice work. And um, like I said, these are just some suggestions on pushing your animation further. And have a great weekend.